In this video, we're going to talk about a somewhat advanced use case, but it is also a use case that shows off some really advanced features of scikit-learn that really allow you to make something that is bespoke. Now, to make the situation tangible, let's assume that I've got these two arrays, uh, one called X, and let's say that there are 25 features in it, and I also have this array Y over here that has ones and zeros, so this is for binary classification. As you normally would do in scikit-learn, you would uh, train a machine learning model, you would call fit x and y, and after that you'd be able to make some uh, predictions. But let's now say that we are dealing with a fraud use case, and we've got these features that we can use for machine learning purposes, but there's one feature that is actually kind of special. And I'm going to draw that as a separate array over here, and I'm going to call that amount. This feature would represent the amount in a transaction. There are lots of other features that might represent the date or some information about the person who's sending or receiving the transaction. But you can definitely imagine that the size of the transaction itself, that really carries a lot of information. And you can kind of wonder how you might be able to use that in a machine learning pipeline. One somewhat obvious way to consider using it is to just add that as part of your normal features. Another thing you might be interested in doing is maybe adapting this fit procedure over here. And in particular, I'm thinking about using a different sample weight. The thinking here is that if you have a transaction amount that is very high, then maybe it should weigh more when we are fitting a model. But there's also another use case, which is that when we evaluate our machine learning model, we typically have our true labels and we've got our predictions, but maybe we have some sort of a custom metric and you can definitely imagine that there is a business case where the amount of the transaction really matters. If it's a very high amount and it turns out to be fraudulent, that is more important to detect. Now, when I paint this scene, I hope you might agree that if we are going for route number one, there's very little that really needs to change. We basically would have to concatenate the amount array together with the normal features, and we can use everything else as we might normally. But in case number two, well, Sure, we are setting a sample weight, and there are direct instructions for that for some machine learning models. But another way of looking at it is that we're interested in adding something extra at fit time. And similarly, you can also imagine that over here, we would also need something extra, but at evaluation time. Now, what I'm talking about here is definitely kind of an advanced feature, but I hope that by painting a picture this way, we need to think a little bit about how we actually want to route this feature to different use cases in our machine learning workload. Phrased differently, we have some metadata and we are interested in routing that somewhat differently. So the feature that I'm going to be talking about, by the way, is called metadata routing. So let's look at some code. So I'm inside of a Jupyter notebook now and I've got this data frame loaded uh, that contains a credit card data set. I have features and I've also got this binary label. And you can see that it's also an imbalanced data set. There's uh, not a whole lot of fraud labels and there's definitely a whole lot of non-fraud labels and uh, yeah, there's uh, orders of magnitude in here. So let's talk about doing something with this data set, but we're gonna start by zooming in on evaluating this data set in terms of this one feature that's in here. If I have a look at this data frame, I can scroll all the way to the right, and you can see that there's this one amount column over here, and I'm interested in doing something special with that. And that's where this business function kind of comes from. This function represents a metric, uh, y true goes in, the y predicted values go in as well, but I also allow for a amount. Now, the way that this is going to work is that I'm going to calculate, given these true and predicted values, how many true negatives do I have? How many false negatives? How many false positives and how many true positives? And all of these are going to be arrays of ones and zeros. So these are like indicators, you could say. These are indicating whether or not a row is a false positive, true positive, etc. Then I can come up with some sort of business gain or loss. There is a benefit to accept a legitimate transaction. And let's, for all intents and purposes, say that this depends on the amount in the transaction. And note, I'm only grabbing the true negatives here. I'm using this true negative array as a predicate that's going to select all the right indices and 
But it gives me all of these amounts and zeros everywhere else whenever there's a true negative over here. But then I'm also assuming that there's some sort of a commission on a transaction. Um, this is a number you're gonna have to figure out by talking to business people, but I'm assuming that there's a number over here and I can multiply this with, and then I can take the sum, and this is going to be some sort of a benefit that I have that really does depend on the amount going in. And similarly, there's a gain, but there's also a cost if I do the wrong thing. So if I accept something that is fraudulent, or if I refuse something that is legitimate, uh, then there are these other costs involved, but the way that I'm calculating this is pretty much the same. I'm again using this array of ones and zeros to grab the right amount, and then I'm multiplying that by some sort of a number that I've predefined up here. There are lots of different ways that you could write this custom function. This is merely meant as an example, and for sure these are numbers that deserve a good discussion. But from the perspective of just code, I would like to mainly observe that y true and y pred that go in here, that's all well and good, but I also need a amount that goes in. And note that this amount over here isn't just some setting. This amount over here is an array that is as long as these two other inputs. And that is something that actually makes it a bit different. In other videos, you might remember that we had this make score function that could take a metric like this into a score, and you could pass these keyword arguments, but that wouldn't work for the amount over here, because again, it's not a single setting. We really need to pass an array that is as long as these two. So this is where we need a new mechanism, and this is where we need to use metadata routing. If we just want to set that up for uh, this function over here, the first thing we have to do is set the configuration, because at the time of making this recording, metadata routing isn't 100% supported everywhere just yet, so you are going to have to set a configuration that is going to allow for metadata routing. Next up, uh, you can take your business gain function, you can turn that into a scorer, just like so, but then you can also chain that with this extra call for a method at the end over here. You can say that you want to set the score request and that you will allow for a amount to be passed through. Note that you want this term to coincide with the term over here. You could theoretically have a different variable name over here. Just make sure that these two uh, are aligned. And when you've done all of that, you can now do something different. Just to be explicit, I've got my amount over here. That's uh, a single column from that original data frame that I'm casting to NumPy. And as a very quick demo, I'm just making a pipeline over here with a standard scalar and a logistic regression. And after that, I'm calculating the cross-validated score. I am passing this business gain score. That will be this one over here. That's being passed down, so that's a proper scorer. But now, because metadata routing is active, I can also pass along these extra parameters over here. And because I have set the score request on the amount, scikit-learn knows that it can take these parameters and route them to this scorer over here. Now, when you look at all of this, you might feel like that's quite a bit of boilerplate and quite a bit of work. And you might wonder why all of this is necessary. And this is where things can get kind of subtle. It could be, for example, that you have some sort of metadata, like this amount, that you really want to use for scoring, but maybe you also want to use it for machine learning. Maybe you want to use it for this logistic regression. Or, better yet, you want to use it for logistic regression, as well as this preprocessor over here. Or maybe it's a bit more complex. Maybe you want to use this amount for the preprocessor and the scorer, but not the machine learning algorithm at the end of the pipeline. The whole idea behind metadata routing is that you can really pinpoint. You can really specify which arrays are supposed to be routed to which part of the pipeline and to what part of your entire system. I hope you can also imagine that there are lots of little things that you could potentially do. And in order to configure all of this right, you are going to have to write a little bit of extra code. Now, I do want to demonstrate this one interesting helper in this case, and that is the train test split. As you might recall from a previous video, the typical way to use it is to call train test split with an xy pair and to keep it at that. But nothing is stopping you from adding extra arrays in here. So if you're going to have xy and some array amount, then you're going to get your x train and x test 
but you're also going to get your amount train and amount test. This is great because it's going to keep in mind any stratification that you might do or whatever the random state is. Whatever split we have in the test and train set is also consistent. Also for this amount array. Now let's use this as a segue to actually start using this amount train and amount test over here. And one way of doing that is to maybe use such an amount array to train a machine learning system. So what I've got over here is just a training procedure of a logistic regression. Theoretically, this logistic regression could accept a sample weight, but this block of code doesn't use that. We can see that when we train it, we get some coefficients and it takes a bit of time to train. But in the code block below over here, I'm passing a sample weight explicitly. And because I'm using X train and Y train over here, I'm also going to be passing a mount train over here. Now, you're gonna notice that a few things are different when I actually do this. Like there is an effect on the algorithm here. For starters, the wall time is a bit different. We also see that there's a warning. Uh, given all of these sample weights, it seems that we might need a little bit more iterations to make sure that we're properly converging. That kind of makes sense if I think about the numerics a bit. But most of all, I can also compare the coefficients and confirm that these are just different. So for sure, adding a sample weight over here is making a change. However, when I think about metadata routing, this is still passing in the amount train directly. And that's all well and good, but sometimes you want to be able to pass such information to a logistic regression when it is part of a larger pipeline or in fact a grid search. So even though I don't technically need metadata routing if I were to pass information along directly, I do want to end this video by showing how you can combine things in a more hyperparameter search setting. And that's what I'm doing down below over here. First off, I'm defining an estimator, which is this logistic regression over here. But notice that I'm also setting a fit request over here. Earlier, we had a score request that we set, but now we are setting a fit request. What's kind of nice here is I'm still able to define my randomized grid search as I would normally. It's just that this business score over here knows that it needs to accept some metadata under the name amount. Again, that's something we defined earlier. And this estimator over here now also knows that it needs to accept some sample weight. So when I have my CV object over here and when I call dot fit, I can just pass in that amount train onto the sample weight, which is going to route it to this logistic regression. And I can also set the amount variable for the business scoring over here as well. And by showing it to you this way, I also hope that you understand why it's called routing. We are literally taking some metadata that some part of the system might need, and we are routing that to the places where we need it. This video is mainly meant as an introduction and also as a motivational piece, but if you want to learn more and really get into the details, I highly recommend you give a look at this metadata routing segment of the scikit-learn docs. There are lots of examples listed on this page, and if you want to learn more, this is a really good read.